Mary had a little man, man, man. Wow. Oh, we believe that all men are created equal. equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. We have had, I mean, really massive, intensive, uh, uh, rapid intensification. So 5 a.m. yesterday, 80 mile per hour winds. This morning, we are at 165 oh mile my per God. hour winds. Now, normal rapid intensification is 35 mile per hour wind increase in 24 hours. Right. Look at how much this has increased. Oh and my it God. could get stronger. Oh so my right God. now, Lee, Category 5 storm, 630 miles East of the northern Leeward Islands, oh 165 God. mile per hour winds. Look at how well defined that eye is. Oh my God! Moving northwest at 14 miles per hour. Now this is the predicted track. By 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, 175 mile oh per hour God. winds. That's what it's predicted at. By Wednesday, 2 a.m., it's still well. The good news is it's well north of Puerto Rico and Guila, <laughs> the Dominican Republic. They'll probably get some strong winds and some rain out of this thing. Now, where is it going after that? The, oh, the thank European God. Ian model Lee is going to be somewhere near Bermuda. The latest guidance now has shifted it slightly to the east. Okay, so that's the okay. European model. American model now pretty much in agreement. But take a look again. You can see these spaghetti plots, as we call them, anywhere from Long Island up to Halifax, Bangor, Maine is possible. <laughs> it's steering. It's the steering currents that we have to worry about. We got a trough of low pressure over over Canada, high pressure out in the Atlantic. Now, scenario number one. If that low pressure is more is stronger, Lee's path will be further away from the east coast. But if this Go high low. pressure is more dominant, it moves closer to the coast. So we're going to just have to watch this. We're not going to have a really good idea about this until at least Monday. Jesus, take the wheel. Oh, my God. I knew I liked Europeans. I knew, <laughs> I, knew I did. I know the spaghetti models are comforting, aren't they? They really are. Un unless you live in Halifax. Bye-bye, Nova Scotia. I, this, look, the reason why this is important is because you have to understand that rapid intensification is a thing. This is what we were talking about with the Dahlia the other day, about how these storms over very warm waters, for instance, the Gulf of Mexico was in the 90s, uh, my part of the Atlantic Ocean, my part over here is like a hot tub. It's 100, 100 plus degrees, okay? And so if this hurricane would come without the uh, low pressure pushing it away from the United States, which we're counting on, baby, uh, without that low pressure system actually pushing it away from the uh, coast of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Wilmington, Delaware, etc., right, to get it over cooler water so that it, you know, sort of shears and falls apart by the time it gets to Bangor. Hello, Stephen. King. That's where he lives. Uh, you know, and uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, where it would not be a 175, do you know how fast, 175 mile per hour, per hour hurricane? Oh my God. You know, Andrew, in 1992, which is when I first started in talk radio over there, that was the very first event that actually put me on the air for a talk radio station, WIOD Miami, right? Uh, it was, it was, it's a long story, I won't tell it, but that's how I first got on the air on WIOD was because Andrew, Hurricane Andrew, was a Category 5 storm. It was small, it was compact, and it was like, it was like an ice skater, you know, pulling her arms in and just centrifugal force being what it is. Just woo! And all the houses back then, in those days, were made out of wood. Spit and glue, as my dad used to say as an engineer. It's all made out of spit and glue. You know, before we started pouring the concrete. What if we did that and put rebar in it? You know. Uh, but, I mean, down there, when we first went down there to, to observe what a Category 5 storm could do, nobody had ever seen it before. So we all went down there to see and, uh, you know, volunteer and everything else went down there with the uh, National Guard and the tent cities, the whole nine yards, okay? Those houses were, were, were toothpicks, okay? Those houses, there was nothing, nothing left. There were monkeys, all over the freaking road. There were monkeys everywhere because we had like a, you know, a monkey village, which I believe has now moved up to Ocala and is responsible for senior citizens getting STDs. You know, it's like a, a monkey village up there. But we had an actual, uh, you know, monkey village. 
And the monkeys uh, escaped because the whole thing was decimated. And there were monkeys all over the road. So, uh, you know, thank God, thank God this storm is going to be hopefully redirected, steering current, steering everybody. So I said, Jesus, take the wheel. Oh, for Pete's sake, for the love of God, heaven to Murgatroyd, take the wheel. Can, can we be glad for a second that it didn't hit Puerto Rico? Oh, my God. I, I just, I, 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 you know, and the Lesser Antilles. Everybody's going, what the hell is the, le-? yeah, the Lesser Antilles. So, you know, uh, they're like a little teeny tinies. They're itty bitties. Uh, they won't survive. They couldn't possibly. You know, and, and just in case you think this, this is like some sort of an Atlantic phenomenon or only this is happening, you know, uh, in the northern hemisphere and the eastern, uh, n- northeastern. No, no, ha- have a little look-see at what's going on in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is like freaking underwater, too. They flooded out. They had two typhoons and then a massive, massive monsoon, massive rainstorm uh, yesterday. I mean, and, and Hong Kong, they're smart. Okay, they're smart. They have an underground tunnel system because they're an island, okay? And they know how to uh, build being where they are in the middle of, uh, you know, the Pacific. So they built this whole underground tunnel system to drain the waters away. And yet, you know, they still flooded. I mean, the water's drained away by now. I mean, it's gone because they have this drainage system that was, uh, you know, very well planned and thought out and built. But during the storm, they got... Uh, what they were supposed to get uh i think uh 12 inches of rain for the entire year for the entire year and the prediction for uh hong kong for the 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 metro area was that they would get three to four inches of rain which was you know a lot it was going to flood so they were telling everybody we're canceling school stay inside blah 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 and let the water drain six and and a quarter inches they got in an hour in an hour that's like almost all their, half of their rainfall in, in an hour for the entire year. So, you know, this is obviously a thing. It's called climate change. It's happening. It's on. This is, do, you know, doing its thing. And now you're sitting there looking at these storms rapidly intensify overnight Overnight and rapid intensification is classified. It's a it's a it's a meteor uh, meteorologic meteor. It's a weather term. <laughs> it's an official weather term. If the uh, intensity of the if the wind speed picks up thirty four miles per hour in a twenty four hour period, that's considered rapid intensification. This one went from eighty miles an hour overnight to one hundred and seventy five miles an hour. Oh my God. Do you understand that this is a phenomenon? Now, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty uh, lucky. Feeling lucky today, everybody? I'm feeling pretty lucky. I don't think this is going to make landfall anywhere on the United States East Coast. However, be very cautious about riptide and 10-foot waves. And, you know, like uh, as it progresses and it goes further north, yes, the water will cool off. But, you know, I remember this thing. It was called Superstorm Sandy. I think it cost uh, Christie, you know, like uh, his entire future. Why? Why? Not because he's responsible for, you know, uh, breathing out and creating his own low pressure system, which I believe he could do. I think he has the capacity and the uh, the character and the courage to do it. But the capacity, you know, that's like the missing element in all these uh, superheroes. But yeah, I do believe that that would be his uh, superpower is to breathe a low pressure system so forcefully out of his own pie hole that it would push the hurricane out to sea. I believe that's true. But he hugged Obama. He hugged him. Remember, Obama went to take a tour of the ravaged Jersey Shore, of the ravaged, you know, uh, 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 parts of uh, Staten Island. And Chris Christie hugged Barack Obama. Therefore, Chris Christie was a piece of dung. Therefore, Chris Christie had to suffer. Therefore, Chris Christie would never, ever be president. (laughs) And that is why you have idiot boy, Nazi man, a white supremacist governor of Florida, refusing, refusing to meet President Biden after he was on the phone with Biden setting up the meeting and then stiffed him, stiffed him and won't take the money. Either. <laughs> All things Randy at randyroads.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. 
All right, let's get down to uh, the business of uh, politics and uh, the things that we are experts in. <laughs> polling, polling two years outside of an election. Oh, my God, who actually makes a living doing this? I, I mean, it, it's it, you might as well just sell, you know, uh, like uh, can- cotton candy to, you know, people uh, who are diabetic. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't even know, like, who is the customer for polling two and a half years outside of an election. Like, who buys that? Who actually wants that? Who needs that? Who needs to know this? Because, I, I let me just tell you something, okay? If you, if you looked at the polling from 2014, from 2014 ahead of the 2016 election, okay? If you looked at polling like that, uh, nobody would think that Donald Trump would be uh, the president of the United States, uh, you know, in 2016, number one. Number two, if you even looked at polling that was done post-Iowa caucuses, okay, where uh, the winners of the Iowa caucus in the previous Republican, uh, you know, uh, um, primaries, okay, were like um, Rick Santorum and Ted Cruz, okay? So Rick Santorum in 2012 and Ted Cruz in 2016. Those, those are the winners of the Iowa caucuses, respect, uh, respected, uh, you know, uh, respectfully. Uh, and, and, they, and, they, and they lost. They lost badly. So, like, why are we polling people that, okay. So yesterday, a really heinous, ugly, disgusting, uh, you know, uh, bottom feeding, uh, you know, polling uh, effort occurred. And it doesn't look good for anybody. That, that, that's the crazy part. It's like uh, 46 for Biden and 46 for uh, Trump. Like nobody is happy with any, you know, and nobody wants the recount, uh, the replay. Nobody. Well, I get that. I, I understand. But it's, it's like as long as you know that the nominees for parties, the only two that we have that are viable in our electoral college system of choosing a president by virtue of uh, uh, 270 electoral votes needed needed to be the president, not a majority of, uh, you know, the people that voted, not, you know, you don't know win by seven, eight million votes and, oh, I'm the president. That's how the Senate you win. That's how the House you win. But that's not how we pick a president in this here country for whatever god awful reason. We still believe that that's the best way to do it, which limits us to two parties. Okay, except that that's true, that I'm not lying to you. That being the case, There is absolutely no satisfaction in Mudville about the two that we are going to have to pick from. There just isn't. Nobody is thrilled. Nobody is happy about this uh, rematch. Nobody wants it. I mean, the two of them are, what, three years apart in age, and everybody's bitching, oh, Biden is too old, but not so much Trump. Why? Because the TV is telling you that. That's what the TV is telling you. You want to know who buys these polls? The TV buys these polls. The TV is going to tell you what's important on Election Day. The TV is going to tell you who to vote for. And the TV is going to manufacture dissent or consent for whoever they feel is, uh, you know, uh, got a higher TV cue, meaning the Trump bump. Because he's exciting, because he's chaotic, because he's a disaster, basically, for American democracy. Because he he causes arguments and hatred. You know, they call him Trump the Builder, Trump the Builder. You know what Trump built? He built a movement of hatred. He built a a new Nazi party that wears red T-shirts. I mean, come on, rethink. One of the only, you know, I won't even say redeeming, but one of the only mesmerizing uh, things about Nazis was their uniforms. I say this as a Jew whose father fought in World War II, okay? So uh, there's no love here. But the the flag, the uniforms, they they were pretty sharp, okay? They were, and now they're wearing red T-shirts, the Nazis, as they parade around Orlando, Orlando. Oh, good Lord, spare me. That is what Trump built, okay? He built a movement of pure, unadulterated hatred by otherizing everyone. And keeping us fighting amongst ourselves serves uh, a great purpose for the Republican donor class, as you know. Okay, so they're telling us on the TV that nobody's happy uh, with Biden. It's Biden's age. That's the thing. The polling's bad. He's losing African-American support. He's losing this support, that support, whatever. You know what? Bite me with this. Two and a half years out, your poll is, is worth less than toilet paper used 
or, or, or the paper towels Trump threw at people after Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. That's the value of these polls. So Fox News decided, hey, let's take this out for a spin. Let's go ask, uh, you know, our viewers whether or not to vote for Biden because, you know, we'll get uh, like a whole bunch of people just trashing him, hating on him, saying, no. well, this was very surprising, very surprising. So the question on the table, Fox asked, uh, will you vote for Biden? Uh, yes, I would oh. support President Biden in 2024. He's been good on the issues I care about, so I'm willing to oh. continue that support. I didn't vote for him the first time. There she <laughs> so is. I'm not going to vote for him. If he is the presidential candidate against other candidates um, that are put up, like in the finals, I will vote for Biden. Oh. I would not support Biden huh. nor Trump. I would oh. like to see a younger generation come into the to, into power and and you know take the, the baton and move it forward. I think it's it's time for more progressive thinking Mm -hmm. from younger folks i mean they've served their country they've done their their jobs and i think it's time for them to retire and move on foreign policy shutting down the pipelines what and all of this it's how is that foreign policy okay you don't have the american people's best interested heart and that's (laughs) this is the country that we live in and he just is not looking out for us I mean, just based on Biden's performance, I think in his past years, I, I would vote for him again um, in 2024. He responds to the economic situation, the economic needs of the vast majority of us, not just the uh, ones that are taking the tax breaks. <laughs> That's a big thing. I wish I was one of them, but I yeah. think I'd still be with Biden. But uh, And I think he's just kept an even keel on things versus our former president. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm with Joe. If he's the candidate and it's a race between him and Donald Trump, I support him wholeheartedly. I just feel like Trump <laughs> is a businessman. He ran the country like a business. <laughs> and the, I mean, we all benefited from the things that he did. I mean, oh, we as did? American people. He tried to close the borders. He tried to put, and, and not to say close the borders, but use the front door. You know, use the door. Don't come over illegally. Get your social security card. Get your immigration. Get your social papers. security card. They pay just like all the American citizens are paying. You know, it's not a free ride for anybody. Uh-huh. And we're all paying for all those that are have you know want a free ride. Uh-huh. I'm not seeing another Donald Trump election. I will not tolerate Ron DeSantis for any longer than absolutely necessary. <laughs> but I I think that I will vote Biden if that's what the DNC decides. So you get the uh, gist of this, okay? This was very pro-Biden, this uh, little man on the street effort there. Except for, you know, a lady over there, they go, uh, you know, uh, get a social security card. I don't know how that happens. They're coming here to claim asylum, honey. That's legal. That's legal activity. Just for your edification. But um, out of all the people they talked to, what, they found uh, one lady? One misinformed, disinformed lady? This uh, This is not terrible, okay? So could we please stop wetting the bed over polls two and a half years out? Clear. Connect. To speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Here's a, a little something from Fox 2. This also is uh, from the Fox. Joe Biden has a tremendous economic record to run on. Ah. There's a nifty chart floating around social media. Everyone should check it out. The U.S. has the highest post-pandemic growth in the G7 and the lowest inflation. All the countries we compare ourselves to, 13.1 million jobs created. So yes, all the ones that were lost during COVID came back. And then we're gaining jobs at a faster clip than we did under the Trump presidency. 800K in manufacturing. There are articles all over talking about the manufacturing boom. Mm -hmm. We know unemployment is below 4%. Interesting, isn't it? But let's hate on Biden two years out. Yeah, let's. Uh, here, here, here's another little bit of uh, you know uh, Fox News is uh, reporting. But we started with over nine percent inflation at this point last year. Now it's at three point two percent. Before you say it's still oh. too high, grocery prices. I get all of it. I too eat and go to the grocery store. <laughs> but we do have the lowest inflation of the G7 in general. This is a global problem, just much like the issue with energy prices was 
when Russia invaded Ukraine, which had nothing to do with the Green No Deal, which hasn't even been enacted. But there are these markers out there. Like, if everything is so terrible, for uh -huh. instance, why does Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, all say we're not going to have a recession now when they thought that we would? Why is the unemployment rate so low? Why are we gaining this many jobs? I mean, <laughs> there are anchors who've been on our own network talking about this completely flabbergasted live on air when the jobs numbers come in. They say, oh my God, this is incredible what we're seeing. Revising up by hundreds of thousands. And then, so you're even surprised when it goes well. <laughs> I'm just imitating an anchor that was surprised. Oh God, he's not dumb. This one was. Um, but also, the Inflation Reduction Act has had a lot of tangible results that Republicans are really happy with. Like Tim Scott, for instance, has been bragging about the investment from this company, Redwood Materials, coming to South Carolina. When you uh -huh. ask Redwood Materials why they came, they said the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act. Oh. That's what it did. It gave incentives to companies. Uh, well, we're going to have to tell Virginia and South Carolina that, uh, you know, this uh, Inflation Reduction Act that brought jobs to South Carolina is really part of a commie plot. Oh, she was just the most charming. But I do, I do want to say... So, she, Brett, I just want you to know, Virginia, Brett said yeah. you were the nastiest old bat he'd ever spoken to in his life, and we speak to some really gnarly people. We speak to some really bottom-feeding, she, she really maggot-like people, but he said you were so nasty to him. And then I said, well, why didn't we put her on the air, you know? Uh, uh, maybe we could get, you know, something, uh, you know, clip-worthy from her. Uh, he said she just hung up on me. She said, y'all are communists. Communist socialist idiots, and you're going to vote for that idiot. I said, well, ma'am, would you like to talk to I us I guess about Redwood Materials idiots? that came to South Carolina creating hundreds of jobs there uh, was a communist plot to infiltrate, uh, you know, uh, poverty-stricken South Carolina rural, uh, you know, neighborhoods. Yeah, it's all a communist plot. You dumbass. You are part of something so vile and so ugly and so counterproductive to what we're supposed to be striving for and doing here in the United States, and that's making the American dream available to even more people, not less. God. I love Jessica Tarlov. She's my new Shepard Smith. She's my, new, <laughs> she's my new Fox hero. I love her. Well, I don't know if she's gay or... Uh, <laughs> no, well, I love what she's bringing to the table on that particular Well, network. she's very smart. I mean, and, and to, to throw... Uh, she's not the Shepard Smith. She's the Alan Combs is what she is, okay? Okay, I'll take it. You know, Shepard Smith is a, was a serious straight news anchor. Um, but Jessica Tarlov is trying to... Uh, and she's doing a really good job of, of taking... Uh, the job that was Alan Combs for all these many years as a sidekick at first to Sean Hannity. It was Hannity and Combs. And then uh, they decided that they... And, you know, they go out and they try and find somebody so unappealing. Like in, in Jessica's case, they find a brunette. They think their audience will not tolerate a brunette. <laughs> okay, so they found... They made sure Jessica Tarlov had a, a, a brunette hair. But uh, honestly, she is f smart as a whip. She does her homework. She comes loaded for bear. She brings the numbers. She brings the stats. She brings the facts. And she flings them at them. And they sit there and they let her do it because somebody on high told them, let her do it so we can claim that we're fair and balanced. But they have nothing to say in retort. They have nothing to say in response. Because, oh, you, you know, here, this, this was the last quarter of the Trump administration, all right? This was uh, the last uh, uh, quarter of uh, Christine Romans, who is the uh, finance reporter for CNN, the money reporter for CNN. This was the last quarter as Donald Trump was leaving. Well, we, we hoped he was leaving at this point. We didn't, we didn't expect a, well, we sort of kind of thought that decency would win, that the American way, truth, the American way. It didn't. It didn't. We had to have violence on January 6th. But uh, this was the last report about the economy. He, this man, we had already seen 9.5 million jobs just go away. No, the coronavirus has slammed the brakes on the job market recovery, John. 140,000 jobs lost in the month, and that is a big miss. Economists had expected you'd still see some jobs creation, but 140,000 jobs uh, lost here. Pandemic jobs lost altogether now with some revisions factored in there. About nine and a half million jobs oh. still lost since this oh. pandemic began. That is a huge number, John, and it's an illustration of just the big work ahead for President-elect Joe Biden 
Biden and his team. Uh, when you look at um, the jobs in the Trump administration, this is the last jobs report of his tenure, but he's down more than 3 million jobs from February 2017 to December 2020. Again, the pandemic just wreaked havoc on his legacy in terms of the economy. Yeah, the, all the good stuff he did for us. You know, when I when I when I see that lady in the Fox, uh, you know, street uh, man on the street, uh, you know, question, will you vote for who are you going to vote for in twenty twenty four? And she says she will not vote for Joe Biden because Donald Trump did so many good things for us, so many good things. Like what? Tell us to you know put UV lights up our bum. To, you know, what if you could uh, you know put the light inside the body? What if you could do that? With uh, little Debbie Burke sitting there and he's saying, oh, yeah, we're going to try that. We're going to try that. And, and she looks like she wants to crawl up anybody's butthole and disappear. I mean, the pain on that woman's face. And she, she sat there and soldiered through it because she was not willing to speak up. She didn't have the courage or the fortitude to speak out against the orange menace who was saying ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, Right. UV lights, bleach, drink bleach, everybody, have some bleach. It's, uh, you know, when you look at the bleach and you put it on your countertop, well, it kills the virus in 2.3 seconds. Why can't you just, uh, you know, do that on the inside? <laughs> yeah, he did so many great things for us, great things, and ended up, you know, with uh, 9.5 million lost jobs. And then, but you know, and it's, it's always like this, okay? From the... All through the 80s and the 90s when the Republicans would win over and over again because everybody was just crazy cuckoo in love with Ronald Reagan. So much so that his vice president would do too, right? Ronald Reagan, Reagan Bush. Okay, so Ronnie has uh, got the Alzheimer's. He's going to step aside. He's, and he's, uh, you know, uh, and he's term limited. <laughs> so let's vote for his vice president who will get us into wars that we never thought we should ever fight. Okay, let's do that. And, they, you know. That's how in love you were uh, during the 80s and the 90s with the Republican presidents and the trickle down and all this crap. And once the economy crashed and we got Obama, fix it. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Why are you so confident in, in Biden's chances for re-election? Well, look, I spent most of my August break getting calls from panic Democrats who ruined my vacation. So I decided, <laughs> Sarah, to just look at the data and, and pretend we'd never heard of Joe Biden or Donald Trump and just look straight at the data about the misery index, about unemployment, about various statistics that really prove who is likely to win presidential elections. And when you look at the data, Joe Biden has a much better chance than Donald Trump to win the presidency. It doesn't mean it won't be close because it absolutely will. It right. doesn't mean Trump can't win because he can. But I just wanted to actually give real data to folks to say, if you were playing poker, you'd much rather have Biden's hand than Trump's. That's, you know, I, thank you. That's Jim Messina, who shepherded uh, Barack Obama into the second term. Uh, he was uh, the manager of the Obama reelect, okay, in uh, 2012. And, you know, he's like, just look at the data. That's all you can do. And yes, it's going to be close. And the country is, you know, uh, really divided badly. We have, you know, cult like, uh, you know, uh, loyalty for a felon, where, and you have candidates on a stage who are running against that felon but will not call him a felon, won't do anything to call any attention to the lawlessness that is Donald Trump's life, to the criminal activity that he has uh, been involved in, like, uh, for his whole life. Uh, you know, obviously fraud and uh, fraudulent schools and fraudulent charities and, uh, you know, all kinds of lawsuits, hundreds, if not thousands of lawsuits uh, where he settles with everybody all the time once, you know, it gets to a, a jury. Right. And he and twice convicted now of uh, sexual assault of E. Jean Carroll. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It's not just the defamation. It's that he actually sexually molests teenage girls, women on airplanes, uh, E. Jean Carroll, and a jury, a jury. This isn't, a, you know, like, a, 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 it's not the MSNBC hosts 
that are finding Donald Trump liable. It's not the, the, the CNN uh, you know, uh, anchors that are finding Donald Trump guilty of defrauding the uh, Trump University uh, students at $36,000 a piece. No, it's juries and judges and courts, okay? Over and over and over again. Now, we're talking about the ultimate criminal charges. We're talking about seditious uh, conspiracy. We're talking about trying to overthrow a peaceful transfer of power, not even trying, actually watching violence uh, ensue against our U.S. Capitol, watching uh, five people uh, turn up dead uh, as a result of the violence that day, watching people defecate in the hallways of the Congress, watching people hunt Nancy Pelosi, watching Nancy Pelosi's husband get beaten up in the middle of the night, and having people actually say, oh, it was his gay lover, in order to excuse the, the, the violent uh, you know, uh, uh, reaction that is all Trump the Builder built to democracy itself. That's all he was able to build, was a, a, a repugnant, violent rejection of all things democratic. Now you have Joe Biden. Okay, is he the epitome of boring? He is. But you know, Molly Jung Fast, who uh, you know, is a really good writer for Vanity Fair, and you know, Vanity Fair is my absolute all-time favorite uh, you know, periodical. It just is. And she wrote this uh, really, really good piece about how Joe Biden's being boring could actually be Joe Biden's superpower. And she agrees with my conclusion. And my conclusion is thus, and it's always been this, that Joe Biden is like watching paint dry in the national media, okay? And national media wants, if it bleeds, it leads, type news. That's why, if you want to check, if you want to check me, okay, Just have a little look-see at CNN over the past, what, I don't know, three days? Three days. We have had some of the best economic news. We've seen, uh, you know, unemployment consistently be below 4%, which is setting all kinds of records, all kinds of historical records uh, for the longest period of uh, below 4% unemployment in this nation. We've seen the fastest reduction in inflation in, 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 in our history, okay, without... A recession being the result, okay? We see a very resilient uh, economy. We saw all the COVID jobs that were lost come back and more, plus another 6 million jobs. We're watching the Rust Belt become the battery belt. We're watching materials factories uh, actually be built to support the uh, battery factories, right? All over this place, all over red states and every place. And Joe Biden can't get any credit for it because on CNN... For the last, what, three days, four days? I don't know. Could have been all week. Because, you know, I was, uh, I I wasn't away without leave. I was away getting my, uh, you know, uh, my stitches in my face, right? Which is what I did. No, that sounds like I got plastic surgery. Stitches in my mouth, which are still there, lovingly lodged in my face. Um, but they've been covering this, uh, this, this miscreant crab walking dude who escaped from prison somewhere in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Now, the guy's crime is so brutal. It is so hideous. It's so ugly what this guy is, is in jail for. He, I mean, he's in, he's in jail for the rest of his life because he was a mur- uh, he's a young kid. <clears throat> There's something, you know, like uh, it's just some people are prone? I don't know. I can't explain how a person's life at a young age is comprised of these facts, but it his is. So he killed a girl, murdered her, and his girlfriend found out. And when his girlfriend, who is the mother of two young children, confronted him with the fact that she knew that he had murdered another girl, he then murders her with, I mean, like stabs her hundreds and hundreds and like a rage killing, okay? Like real personal rage style stabbing just over and over and over again. And the piece de resistance, the, 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 the un- most unbelievable fact of all the facts of this disgusting thing in front of the kids, in front of their, the two, the two little kids killed their mother. So this guy gets, uh, you know, uh, locked away for the rest of his life. And I don't know why he's in, like, you know, a a, a prison that allows him to go outside. Because when you see this uh, clip over and over for the past week, I've been watching the same old clip. And they they call it the crab walk. He's crab walking up the, uh, you know, uh, the walls, 
because he's small, he's a little guy, he's five. Well, there you go. There's your explanation. It's always the little guys. It's the DeSantis's, right? But anyway, rage filled. He's crawling up the wall in like a crab like motion and getting out of the prison. But if you look at the guy who's also outside, the guy's got, you know, I don't even know what to call this tattoo, uh, uh, you know, uh, design. I mean, what am I going to call it? It's like he's got two sleeves of tattoos, okay, and then a bolero of tattoos across his chest. And these guys are just outside the prison, hanging outside, and able to escape. I don't, I don't understand. But this is what CNN is focused on like a laser all week. Meanwhile, Joe Biden has accomplished almost anything and everything you would want a president to have done. He is probably one of the most effective, best presidents of our lifetime. And my lifetime includes the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and now, right? And in the 80s and 90s, all we got was trickle down, trickle down, trickle down, trickle down. Welfare queen, hatred, hostility, race, uh, raceism. Uh, how could a woman, you know, be on food stamps and have a cell phone? How could that possibly be a thing? The Cadillac woman, always the black one. And then when you actually looked at the, you know, uh, available facts about that, you found out that the majority of people on food stamps were white people white ones but you never heard about that because it's not sexy you can't sell that you can't get eyeballs glued to the tv can't make people afraid can't make them rage can't make them angry can't make them vote right so boring it seems to be a superpower of a good president so we had reagan who was so popular with a bad economy i mean mortgage interest rates under ronald reagan because of the recession was so bad was 18 percent 18 percent on a on a home loan I mean, and this guy was revered. And all he wanted to do was say, uh, Medicare's got to go. Social Security's got to go. These are socialist programs where, you know, Virginia in, in, in South Carolina is still repeating this swell, okay, voting against their own best interests. And then we got uh, the Daddy Bush. We got the HW, and we got the Gulf War with the Scud Studs in a war. This is what, uh, you know, he produced. One-termer, okay? And then we expected Bill Clinton to come in on the back end of that, solve all of our problems. And guess what? He did. He did. We had one of the greatest economies in the world once we changed parties. And then they handed the keys back to the sun, to the W. And then we got 20-year wars out of him and torture and real ugly, ugly lion. I mean, like, incredible world heavyweight champion lion. And he wanted to make his, uh, you know, his, his advisor, you know, his, his like, uh, work mom or his work wife, Harriet Myers, he wanted to make her a Supreme Court justice. And then we said, Obama, you fix it. And he did. Mary, how does it go? We believe that all men are created equal. equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Changes come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. The report just released by the special grand jury in Georgia. It shows charges were recommended against Senator Lindsey Graham, oh. then Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, and other key Trump allies. Oh my God. The jury gathered evidence for the case against former President Trump, hearing from more than 75 witnesses, but did not have the power to bring charges. Mm. The report was sent to the DA, but only portions of it were previously made public. Let's bring in senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Asha Rangappa on the phone for more on this. So, Aaron, what are we learning from this report? Primarily, we're learning that 20 more people were recommended for criminal oh charges than were actually charged by the district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia. And those include the senators you mentioned, former senators, uh, Loeffler and Purdue, but also uh, sitting Senator Lindsey Graham. Why the district attorney ultimately did not decide to bring charges against these extra individuals, we, we don't know. We may never know. Uh, but some of them including some of the, the, the fake electors who would have certified that Trump won the state, even though he lost it, ended up uh, getting recommended for charges. They ended up cooperating with the district attorney. So we know some of them at least reached cooperation deals. But why the senators ultimately weren't charged, uh, we're not sh uh, sure. But it shows that this mm. case had the possibility to be even bigger 
more expansive than it already is. Oh, man. I, we were this close, man. This close, I tell you. So uh, what we were allowed to see today is the summary of the special grand jury. So you remember uh, Fonnie Wills in Georgia had at first a special grand jury that did not have the power to indict. It only had the power to recommend indictments. Well, uh, that's what we got uh, a summary of. We got a summary of their... Um, uh, let's say non-unanimous votes and their unanimous votes. So there were 21 jurors in the uh, special grand jury. Remember, you remember that uh, girl, Emily Coors, remember her? The one that we love to hate because she was like uh, so smug and so self-satisfied that she knew what had gone on in the grand jury because she was the foreman of that grand jury. And she was what, 12, 13 years old, something like this. Remember her? Yeah. Um, so uh, she actually said this wasn't just a few days of jury duty. I've been kind of thinking about this as, as we were going to speak today. I mean, this was more than seven months of your life and dealing with one of the most closely scrutinized investigations in recent political history. I mean, what is your lasting impression of this process, Emily? I've loved being a part of this process. I think it's amazing to actually be able to be a part of this process for once. I think it's a privilege to be able to actually be a part of the system for once and making it work. Um, this has been fascinating to get this peek into the world of like politics and of all these different, of government and of all these different things and, you know, have the curtain lifted just a little bit and let us peek in as regular people has been amazing. And I'm so glad that I did it. So after that, when it's all said and done and the DA makes her final decision on charging, what do you say to people who question your findings or want to say that your investigation, what you all were doing in that room was influenced by politics? I think that's the opposite. I think that by choosing to have a grand jury, by choosing to impanel regular people, they very specifically chose to avoid politics, to take bias out of the question, because they chose to get, instead of anyone else, they chose to get 16 random people. They could have gotten, you know, if they had wanted someone who was just gonna support their opinions, they could have gone and hired a bunch of legal experts. There, there were all kinds of choices that could have been made there, but they chose to get a random sampling of the population of the area, and I think that speaks really strongly to them trying to avoid bias in any way and trying to avoid politics. After everything that you've seen, what would your reaction be if the DA decides against bringing any charges after what you've seen? I will be sad if nothing happens. Mm. Like, that's, that's about my only request there is, is for something to happen. I don't necessarily know what it is. I'm not the legal expert. I'm not the judge. I'm not the lawyers. But I, I will be frustrated if nothing happens. This was too much. Too much information, too much of my time, too much of everyone's time, too much of their time, too much argument in, in court about getting people to appear before us. Mm -hmm. There was just too much for this to just be, oh, okay, we're good, bye. So now that you listen to her in hindsight, uh, and you, 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 know, you really uh, realize how um, she was like the uh, cat that caught the, the, the mouse you know and she was just so self-satisfied with the idea that she could go out and publicly tell you that th this was a uh, an experience that she had but now you know in retrospect looking back and and listening to what she's telling you there is absolutely no arguing with the fact that this was not politics that this was random uh people from uh, you know across the uh, fulton county from uh, from across that county uh from atlanta who were randomly selected to do grand jury duty, and they sat and did a special grand jury for seven months. Seven. They listened to 75 witnesses, okay? They had a hard time getting people to come and testify. A lot of people were just, you know, into delay. Uh, some people were actually in contempt of court. Some people just refused to participate. Some uh, actually claimed that they had privileges they didn't have. Now we come to find out that 39 people, 39 people. Now, you know that this special grand jury had no ability to indict. It only made recommendations. And then Fannie Wills had to go and seat another grand jury, a, set, a, a new grand jury that did have the power to indict because that's how Georgia is, right? 
So that's why this has taken so freaking long. And people are going to accuse her of launching the trial ahead of an election. We're two, two years out, okay? Which is partly why the polls are useless at this point, because we're so far out from an election. But they're going to accuse her of uh, political timing, whatever they can. But obviously you see that the reason why it's not, it's only uh, happened now that we got 19 indictments out of a second seated grand jury who also had to hear from 75 witnesses after the first grand jury was seated for seven months and didn't have the power to indict. Now you can see why it took so long and why I get so frustrated with justice delayed in this country because that is really how it happens, real squeaky slow okay and so uh it's just it's important for everybody to understand so there were 39 people recommended for indictment or recommend yeah and and, uh, of course this special grand jury couldn't issue the indictment they could just recommend 39 people recommended for indictment of those 39 20 did not get indicted 19 did 19 did and we all know who the 19 are, right? We know it's Chesboro. We know it's uh, uh, Sidney Powell. We know it's Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman. We know it's Trump, okay? We know it's Jeff Clark. We know it's, uh, it, it, some of them are still unknown, uh, you know, uh, uh, unnamed co-conspirators. I'm guessing the one that we don't know is Boris Epstein, right? Anyway, I'm looking at uh, why now in this, uh, the, the summary is only 28 pages. It's not really that hard to sit down and read over the weekend if you really wanted to. Uh, But the 28 pages are very uh, enlightening. It will show you that uh, only one voted against charging Trump, Giuliani, Eastman, and Powell. Only one. So there was one cult member in there. Now, why is that interesting? Because obviously you don't need a unanimous grand jury to indict or to recommend indictment in the special grand jury setting. But... At trial, you do need a unanimous jury. And if there's one person that infests the jury process when this thing does go to trial in Fulton County, Georgia, and we know Cheeseboro and Powell, uh, they wanted a speedy trial. They picked October 23rd. Everybody's agreed. October 23rd, September now. You're, You're talking like six weeks from now. But if one little miscreant can get through and get uh, past voir dire and get on that jury and tank the whole process, then what? Okay, I'll tell you. Then there's an acquittal, and Trump goes out there, and he goes and tells the maggots, see, I told you, it was all political. It was a witch hunt. It was a hoax. Things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. From the very beginning, the uh, Trump campaign was a large criminal enterprise. I mean, we forget his campaign manager, his deputy campaign manager, his national security advisor, his uh, foreign policy advisor, his chief political advisor. <laughs> they are all felons now. Felons. They were involved in the first uh, convictions that went to Donald Trump. <laughs> and if you worked in politics and you looked at it, you looked at how it was set up and who was running it. Uh, these weird people that he brought in mm-hmm. who they didn't wake up one day and decide they wanted to be involved in politics because of Donald Trump. These are people who have been trying to get involved in presidential campaigns. I mean, I, I worked in five of them, Republican side, and no one would let them in. Donald Trump let them in. Mm-hmm. And it really, it, they took over the Republican uh, National Committee and really turned it into a money laundering operation for the Trump family. Mm-hmm. And it just became this large criminal enterprise. And eventually, most large criminal enterprises fall apart because of infighting. Somebody feels like they're not getting enough. They rat each other out. As Donald Trump uses this mobster language. And that's what's unfolding now. But still, on stage in that, that debate, uh, all but two, I think, of the Republican candidates said that they would support this guy who is a criminal <laughs> if he wins a nomination for their party. You know, it's uh, it's 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 so perplexing uh, on the one hand and on the other hand, you know that there are people that are grifters just like Trump and they would like to be the next generation of snake oil salesmen. They would like to be the next generation of smarm. They would like to be the next generation of fraud, the next generation of snake, the next generation of sleaze. Okay, 
uh, and they know that the way to actually enrich themselves is to cause chaos amongst us, not to deliver to us any relief for any of our issues, problems, or, or whatever, you know, is a, a pandemic-sized problem, but to say that the problem itself is a hoax and that there is no solution to it that the government can provide. Uh, the scariest words you'll ever hear is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah, tell that to, uh, you know, the people that get uh, decimated in, in hurricanes or in tornadoes or, uh, you know, uh, tidal waves or, or, or earthquakes. Yeah, tell them. That, that, that bull crap. Tell people that are, you know, are receiving some help with buying food that the government, uh, you know, sucks. Go ahead. Tell them that. Hey, you know, some of them will believe it, you know. But uh, obviously there are generations of grifters waiting in the wings. The Roger Stones of the world is who Stuart Stevens there is talking about. Nobody would let Roger Stone near a real presidential campaign until Donald Trump came along. Okay, nobody would let Paul Manafort run a campaign. This guy was in debt to Oleg Deripaska, the aluminum oligarch, okay, who's now under indictment, okay, in I can't even tell you how many countries, and Manafort was, uh, you know, indebted to him. I, I, Bannon convicted yesterday, uh, Peter Navarro convicted. Juries are doing this, not political operations, okay? There, there, there is no democratic, uh, you know, operation that is, you know, uh, recruiting people uh, to, to, I don't know, magically uh, snap at, snatch out of the sky guilty verdicts from, you know, juries. No, these are actual juries that are in panel for seven months at a time, six months at a time. You know, all of the... Unbelievable. And then what's their thank you? What's their thank you for your service in this country now? So uh, the secret grand jury that actually did indict Donald Trump, that did indict, uh, you know, Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani, that did indict, you know, John Eastman and, and Kenneth Chesbro and, and Jeffrey Clark and the rest of them. OK, what th their names were released to the public and they got doxxed and they get threatened. That's how a a a a. Grateful nation, thanks, grand jurors now, for holding accountable the super powerful among us. I, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's just, it's breathtaking. And if you don't think they were fair, let's take the case in point of the other uh, people that were not indicted, the 20 other people that weren't indicted, who were recommended for indictment. And this jury said, no, we don't recommend them for indictment. Okay, so Lindsey Graham uh, the, the reason why Lindsey Graham wasn't recommended for indictment, do you remember what Lindsey Graham was accused of in Georgia? So Lindsey Graham was accused of calling Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, repeatedly, uh, asking him if he could possibly figure out a way to throw out absentee ballots. Now, Brad Raffensperger testified before both of these, uh, well, this, this special grand jury at the beginning. He went and he testified. He also testified to the one that did have the power to indict. But in the special grand jury setting, he testified that Lindsey Graham's phone calls to him, remember, Lindsey Graham is from South Carolina. Why was he calling Georgia? Why was he asking questions about absentee ballots cast in Georgia repeatedly to the Secretary of State of Georgia, right? And everybody was like, what is he doing? I mean, it, 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 does Donald Trump have pictures of him, you know, with a, a dead boy or a live goat? You know what I mean? Like, what is going on with him? Now we find out Ken Paxton is being blackmailed by various people in, uh, you know, Texas. Yes, it's a thing. But anyway, Lindsey Graham had called Raffensperger, testified to the special grand jury. And we know this now because we got the report today uh, that Lindsey Graham made him feel very uncomfortable. Because what Lindsey Graham was requesting of him seemed to him to be to disenfranchise legitimate voters who voted by absentee ballot, which is completely legal, completely acceptable. They did nothing wrong. Their signatures were verified. You know, remember, we had three counts in Georgia, three separate counts, the original count a hand recount of all five million ballots and then a Trump requested recount with signature matching. And Lindsey Graham still kept calling. Well, of the uh, jurors, only 13 of them said yes, that they should recommend indictment for Lindsey Graham. That's 13 people who listened to the evidence and said Lindsey Graham did something that he shouldn't, been, it shouldn't have been doing, and it would have had the effect of disenfranchising voters. Okay, so he was not recommended uh, by Fonnie Willis for the grand jury that had the power to indict. 
Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, who were senators at the time, whose name was on the ballot in a special election that was going to be held shortly after January 6th. It was held and they lost. Both of them lost because they were actually pressuring the Georgia legislature, a la Donald Trump's pressure tactics and Rudy Giuliani's appearance before the Georgia legislature, telling them that there was massive amounts of fraud and that even though they didn't know it, even though the Georgia secretary of state couldn't find it, even though uh, uh, the, the other guy gave, gave uh, I forget his name, Gabe, Gabriel, who, who said this has got to stop. People are going to get shot. Remember that? And Rudy Giuliani knew that he had edited the videotape of Shea Moss and uh, uh, Ruby Freeman and showed it to the state legislature saying they were passing around vials of, uh, you know, uh, USB ports. They were passing them around as if they were vials of heroin. And in the end, it was obviously an edited video. And what they were passing around was a ginger mint. But he named Ruby Freeman, Donald Trump named Ruby Freeman, and caused them to be in harm's way to the point where the FBI told them they had to leave their house. She had to leave her own little business. She had a, a, a woman's boutique, a fashion boutique, right? She had to leave because she was in danger. This is what Rudy Giuliani did. He's been indicted. Loeffler and Purdue, who were pressuring the legislature also to have the special session, yeah, 16 recommended Purdue be indicted and 13 Loeffler. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. When you look at the vote count, sort of how the members of the special grand jury came back, it was clear they were divided on whether these individuals should be charged. There was a re recommendation, but it was not unanimous, and it wasn't just one person voting no. So it's pretty clear why the district attorney would not proceed with charges, because this is the most friendly environment possible for her case, right? You don't have lawyers in the room with witnesses. You don't have a defense presentation. There isn't a high bar. You can indict a ham sandwich is, of course, the famous saying, this is not beyond a reasonable doubt. So if you have problems with a case in before a special grand jury, you're going to have big problems in a real courtroom. It's pretty clear why she wouldn't proceed against these three individuals. Right. So uh, it's pretty uh, clear now that Fonnie Wills, uh, you know, had 39 people that she was looking to uh, get recommendations about whether or not to indict uh, these people based on the evidence that she was able to present to this grand jury. And the grand jury, as uh, you know, uh, Paula Reed there for CNN tells you, is one of those places where there are no defense attorneys, okay? There's just a prosecutor. And the jury is uh, there for a long period of time listening to tons and tons of evidence. Uh, th in this particular instance, it was a RICO case from the beginning, as we now know. It felt like that to me, too, because there were so many, so many months had gone by. And it's, there were so many witnesses, 75 in all, that it just seemed to me that this wasn't, uh, you know, about um, one person, that it was about a conspiracy and that it was going to be pretty large, that there would be a, an, a, an inordinate number of people involved in it because of the time and because of the number of witnesses and because of the um, uh, the recommendations that came out of it. And then the when we had the foreman of the special grand jury come out and say, some you know, some you don't know, then it was obvious that there were so many people and that a lot of them would be um, the fake electors and that a lot of them had entered into um, immunity agreements, the fake electors, because that's another thing that Emily Coors told us back then, right? How many people came into the room to testify with immunity deals already in place? Maybe a dozen. Mm. Maybe a dozen. So, um, yes, as obnoxious as she was. Emily, uh, Emily loves her some Emily. She loved her some, yeah, she was really high on herself. She was. Uh, but, okay, so um, we knew that there were a dozen people who had received immunity so we knew it was large. It was a RICO case. That's how I knew. Everybody was like, how did you know? That's how I know. Okay, so, well, I knew at the beginning, but then that's how I was sure. Okay? You have to, you know, follow the breadcrumbs. So anyway, I do, because that's my job. 
but 39 people. So when you don't get a fulsome vote, meaning, okay, against Donald Trump, against Rudy Giuliani, against John Eastman, against uh, Chesbro, against, uh, you know, uh, Sidney Powell, there was, uh, there was only one person, one, which scares me. You're going to forget that you know this, but you now know this, that there was one person that refused to recommend indictment for any of these people, okay? There was one. But in the case of uh, Lindsey Graham, senator at the time, uh, Kelly Loeffler, senator uh, at the time, David Perdue, senator, different crimes, different, different hub. Like I said, it's a hub and a spoke. It's a, it's a, but one giant wheel, one giant wheel. And uh, some of them are spokes, okay? And the spoke that Lindsey Graham was in charge of was saying, can you throw out the absentee ballots? Okay, and the spoke that Loeffler and uh, Purdue were responsible for was backing up Rudy Giuliani's request for a special session of the state legislature based on no evidence that there was any fraud. In fact, this grand jury actually found unanimously that there was no fraud in the Georgia election that would change the outcome of the election. I mean, none. No, that was a unanimous uh, finding. Okay, so one person wouldn't find anybody guilty. But in the case of the senators, in the case of Lindsey Graham, only 13 of the jurors, I believe there were 21, only 13 of them agreed that Lindsey Graham should be recommended for indictment based on his calling of Raffensperger and Raffensperger's testimony and Kemp's testimony uh, that Lindsey Graham had no business interfering in Georgia's, you know, election, but also was making them very uncomfortable with his requests. So uh, 13 said yes indict him and the rest said no in the case of kelly loffler 14 said yes she was trying to influence the state legislature in an illegal manner uh spreading things she knew to be false to them based on rudy Rudy giuliani's asking looking at edited videotapes and naming people who did nothing but volunteer to be uh you know poll workers and had always volunteered to be poll workers not just volunteered in 2016 or 2020, but their whole lives had been poll workers. It's part of their DNA that, you know, mother and daughter, they uh, volunteer to be poll workers for Atlanta, uh, you know, for uh, presidential elections in Atlanta. Uh, when, in the case of David Perdue, same thing, trying to influence the state legislature to have a special session, 16 of the jurors recommended that he be indicted. So when the news media is telling you that they don't know why the senators weren't indicted, they don't know, it's all a mystery, like that uh, first report we played for you, that's not uh, entirely true. It's knowable. It is knowable. And the answer is that in the friendliest setting you could possibly have, which is a grand jury setting, because it's just a prosecutor, there are no defense attorneys, it's just one side of the story, it's the prosecutor's side of the story that's being told to the jurors, and that if the jurors couldn't agree amongst themselves with the evidence presented that Fannie Willis was able to show, that there was at least almost a unanimous verdict about indicting Lindsey Graham, Kelly Loeffler, and David Perdue, then she didn't really stand a chance when the burden of proof was going to be beyond a reasonable doubt instead of just a preponderance of the evidence, okay, or clear and convincing evidence, right? It's a low standard. And she understood that she would not be able to meet the higher standard at trial and get a unanimous verdict, so she chose not to indict them. So we know why they weren't indicted. When you describe Loeffler and Graham's uh, their part in the scheme, when you describe it in the light of a RICO indictment, it sounds like you're describing rackets, like the gambling racket over here yeah. and the prostitution racket over here. We got the shakedown and the protection over here. Like that's what it sounds like. And they're all in part light of, RICO. of supporting the same enterprise. And that's what RICO is. Exactly. It's racketeering influenced corrupt organizations. And so RICO is traditionally thought of as being a mob charge because there's so many buffers, right? There's so many portions. There's people that run numbers. There's people that run women. There's people that run drugs. There's people that, uh, you know, uh, 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 enforce, okay? There's uh, people that collect debt. There's people that, you know, uh, shake down the neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, the shop owners uh, for, you know, to to make payments for protection. 
there's all these different aspects to the organization, to the enterprise that need to be done. And so people who excel in those particular specialties, right, are the ones that, uh, you know, are the spokes and the hub is the enterprise. And that's exactly how this got charged. It got charged with the same one crime to overturn the results of an election and all these specialties. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It is. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Okay. This is so offensive and there are no words, okay? But uh, which is worse, the suit or what he's saying? Oh, for the... That's Honey Boo Boo's daddy, okay? That's that's your girlfriend's uh, dad. That's the family you wanted to marry into. Look, I definitely own whatever it was, whatever power she had over me, <laughs> I own it. But this guy is such a hypocrite. They act like lock her up wasn't a thing. It's uh, crazy. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. The, the, the idea that they keep selling violence after January 6th and knowing what violence looks like, that they keep selling violence after knowing that Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shea Moss, for the simple crime of uh, volunteering to be poll workers in Georgia, had to leave their own homes for months, for months, because Rudy Giuliani had absolutely no no shame or, or, or honesty or an integrity to, to, to say anything uh, except use them, use them because they were black and blame them for a lost election that Donald Trump legitimately lost. OK, I mean, these are some of the most violent, uh, disgusting. And, and, you know, they, every time they tell me, oh, Trump's the builder, he's going to be the only thing Trump ever built was a, a movement full of hatred, misogyny, uh, white supremacy, uber nationalism, all misplaced, uh, you know, uh, a trust and love for this 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 dear cult leader of theirs. A- and then there's Mike Huckabee, a former governor of Arkansas. OK, who who's current daughter through nepotism and sheer it's not what you know it's who you know she was the white house press secretary who was so such a joke that she actually was a joke okay she was she was the butt of all those jokes at the uh, uh, uh the not the gridiron the uh, correspondence dinner Remember, uh what was that comedian's name i, I love her she and, and she she was you know uh just she just routed Sarah Huckabee Sanders for being just a bold face in your, regardless of what was on the videotape, regardless of photographic evidence, regardless of factual evidence, she would just lie to your freaking face. Just lie. And that's like, you know, and her father, you know, they hold themselves out to be these pious, uber religious, uh, I have, you know, I will never sin against the Lord types who bear false witness every single day that they are in front of a microphone. And apparently Huckabee, honey boo boo there, he, he's got a TV show. Michelle Wolf. That yes, her name. Michelle Wolf. That's her. With the smoky eye. <laughs> it was hilarious. Just, it was hilarious it was, because it was true. Because Sarah Honey Boo Boo was a world heavyweight champion liar. Oh, but I love the way she lied to me. She lied so good. Oh, it was so sad to watch Brett go down that rabbit hole with her. She was my naughty Quaker, and I miss her. But you know, this isn't politics. These are juries. These are juries in multiple states, okay? Juries in in the Commonwealth. Juries in D.C. Juries in New York. Juries in Georgia. Multiple grand juries in Georgia. I mean... How dare they sit there and say this is politics and Joe Biden is doing something. What is he doing? These are independent juries that are seated for months and months and months at a time, listening to 75 plus witnesses testify in front of them, looking at documentary evidence, looking at uh, signatures that did match, looking at videotapes that were edited, looking at uh, the the testimony of, of Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, who went before these grand juries and told their stories, okay, of what happened. And they're still standing there telling you it's Trump or bullets because this is all third world politics. That's what this is. This is a banana republic. Juries of your peers are somehow uh, included in banana republics. I I thought it was like the dictator 
you know, like uh, let's just use Saddam for an for because this is a uh, one that you'll remember real clearly. So Saddam Hussein, Saddam, actually when he uh, ascended to power, you know, and he didn't like his opponents. Remember what he did? Yeah, he not a jury. No, there was no trial. He told everybody, you know, that he wanted to, to identify themselves as anti bath party members to raise their hands, took them to the back of the room, walked them out of the meeting and then had them summarily executed. See that, that that's kind of what, and they're implying that juries in, in, in Georgia, juries in New York, juries in DC are all, I don't know, part of Sodom's, uh, you know, inner circle. Do you understand what has to be true for that for them to be telling you anything that's valuable or truthful? Do you do you understand that? Now Trey Crowder, I gotta say, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Trey actually uh, summarize uh, what what Mike Huckabee just said. I just saw that the MAGA crowd's got a new slogan. I guess it's Trump or death. They're hanging <laughs> Trump or death banners all over baseball games and stuff like that. And I saw that. And I was like, oh, that's not culty at all. Of how they're like, yeah, well, this is just because. We entered into a ritual suicide agreement on behalf of the autocrat we've deified. That doesn't make us a cult. It's like, okay, you guys are literally saying if he doesn't win, you're going to kill yourselves? Because if so, oh, no, please don't. <laughs> Think of what it would do to the flag economy. Now, listen, if that is what y'all are saying, I just got one request. Okay, please, please let me make the Kool-Aid. All right, I'm a trailer American. I know how to do it. All right, I'll, I have the ratio just right. I'll run the punch ball. I'll make a little pallets on the ground, lay down some pillows for you, make it lovely. Okay, that's all I'm at. I would be honored. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Unless you're going to do it. His only request is let me make the Kool-Aid because I'm a trailer American and I know the perfect ratios, okay? And I know just how to do it for you. I mean, it is so bizarre that you have to laugh. I mean, you have to laugh. They're all getting indicted. I mean, Peter Navarro had to have set the record for speedy trial. I never saw anything like that. Like, from the minute I woke up on Monday uh, and, and found out that Tuesday was going to be jury selection in Peter Navarro's trial, and then by Tuesday night, they were, like, I don't know, deliberating. <laughs> it's like, holy crap, holy crap. And then, you know, he went to a presser yesterday um, after <laughs> after he was convicted OK, and uh, he he decided that this this is the, the trial of the century, his trial, which literally took less than four hours of the whole thing. Here we are <laughs> with one of the most important constitutional separation of powers issues and people will not let me speak. This is my First Amendment right. This is what I'm going to do now uh, is allow... Um, There's cameras here. The marshals just saw you. The marshals just saw you. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You just assaulted me. That man just assaulted me. He stuck a flagpole in between my legs. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Um... <laughs> There you go. You're All right. Now. They're calling for services. That was just assaulted. Look, if you got a sign, no, I did it. Liar. I can hold it anywhere I want. This yeah. is public property. It's assault. Right? I want to press charges. This is, this is going well. Charges. This is going really well. Are you interested in yeah. hearing them? Yeah. Go ahead, Peter. Go ahead and talk. You're on Shadow Cop. I don't agree with some of your <laughs> but go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk. No, I did it. No, I did it. Go ahead and talk, man. Go ahead. It's a sad day for America. Yeah, it's a sad day. Now that girl, that girl, she she is a protester. Obviously, she goes to every single court date that Peter Navarro has ever had. This is her from the other day, okay? And and he 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 literally gets violent with her. I mean, everybody around him, you know, she's like, they stuck a flagpole between my legs. The marshal just saw you. I want to press charges, right? Here she is the other day. So here's the problem here. It's like, where's the CNN? CNN here? No. Is CNN here? No, they're not. Anybody want to own up to that? Own. No, it's C-SPAN. Here's the problem. Hero. Who's this? Come on. Bro, Get me out. you're already Come facing on. charges. Yeah, I get it. Go ahead and commit so, a crime. So, so, um. I've been here the whole time. Situational awareness. Yes, okay. I've been here the whole time. Situational awareness, okay? <laughs> she, you're already <laughs> facing charges. <laughs> you gotta love her. <laughs> now, she's such a, a, she's, she's so brave, you know, just standing there. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. Situational awareness, okay? You're in trouble anyway. No, you can't have my... No! <laughs> this is justice being done in this country. And, you know, it's a delicious thing. It really is. So savor. Savor a little bit over the weekend. Uh, I have to tell you, Coco Groff, 
I want those sneakers. Go, girl. She's from Delray. She's from the town that I'm sitting in right now. Unbelievable. Congratulations to you. Um, and congratulations to the juries who made it through and did justice. It's just the beginning, though. Just, just the beginning.